This video is made possible by our sponsors, AJA. We'd like to thank AJA for all their support and tell you to go to AJA.com for all your production and post-production needs. Hi, I'm Gordon Burkell from Filmmaker U. At Filmmaker U, we create courses for film professionals to deepen and diversify your existing skill set. You can learn more at FilmmakerU.com or, of course, follow us on Instagram at Filmmaker underscore U. Every week, we interview a film professional to discuss their work. And this week, I'm joined by editor John Raffanelli, uh, whose work includes Emily in Paris, The Detour, and more recently, Survival of the Thickest, just to name a few. Welcome to the show, John. Thank you for having me. I guess my first question for you is, how did you get on uh, Survival of the Thickest? Um, so Survival of the Thickest, I worked with uh, producer Willie Friedman, Judson Schwartz, and post supervisor Lauren Bernstein on a previous project, um, Flatbush Misdemeanors, which was on Showtime. That was my first time working with the three of them. We had a great uh, collaborative process, and then they recommended me for a Survival of the Thickest after that. So it was good to, they all three of them went on to Survival of the Thickest, and then, like I said, they recommended me. So. Interesting. So how, like, what is your approach when you start to get the rushes in? Like, how do you like to start? Like, I've talked to some editors and they like to just put everything into the timeline, chip away at it. Others want to go through selects and various things like that. How do you like to approach your cut? Um, I like to, the first thing I do is once it's in my system and in front of me is I just watch every clip down and not even doing it. I'll, I'll take notes if I, if I like something or, or whatnot. But I simply just watch it down from start to finish and start to, it, A, it helps me familiarize myself better with the script because I'm more of like a visual learner. So I read the script and then I'm watching it down. So I'll literally just watch everything down and not do anything. Then I watch it down a second time and start to put the takes I like into a timeline. And generally, I, I like to do rough edits of every single scene. And there'll be like one or two passes of the scene. And then once I have a rough edit of every scene, I put it in a giant timeline and that's when I start doing my polishing process of what's the best performance, what type of temp sound effects and music and pacing. And then I just slowly chip away at it from there. I also like working with, uh, which usually I've, I've worked with great assistants who set it up for me. They'll do like a line by line string out. Mm -hmm. But then once I'm deeper in the process of what's the best performance, I start just looking at every take, literally every line, like over and over again, kind of thing. Interesting. So what what would you say is one of the challenges of uh, editing this series? Um, I wouldn't say it's a challenge. It's almost like a, a good uh, predicament to have, but the uh, Michelle Bateau is fantastic at improv. Mm. So a lot of times it becomes a what is the funniest <laughs> version of the line that you could put into there. So a lot of times it's just like, how far can we get away from the script? and yeah. be funny and then like present that to the producers and everything um so it's challenging in a sense for me of like sometimes there's three or four just super funny takes and it's like which one of these do i use and ultimately you pick one and then you go back and forth between between it well and, and so did you guys shoot multi-cam or single cam because ad libbing would be a lot harder with single cam <laughs> yeah it was uh it was multi-cam some some locations were single cam so so luckily there were moments where we at least had like the other cast members reaction for an ad lib but sometimes yeah. we just cheated it or faked it um for the single cam stuff and i would say like Pasha Smith, Tone Bell and, and Michelle Bateau they all tried their different like versions of, of improv and different stuff in different sections and everything so they always did the scene as it was like supposed to be done and then they would just go off on their little mm -hmm. riffs i grew up in a household in the projects in east harlem there's a program that wnet the public television station to get more people of color behind the camera in the editing room doing sound writing scripts when they put me in a dark room and they showed me how to use the splicer and the rewinds I felt this big sigh of relief, this sense of, wow, I found my space. The editing part of filmmaking is the real nuts and bolts of what makes films come to life. You can ask Spielberg, you can ask Tarantino, you can ask Spike. When you sit here, this is where the proof is in the pudding. I'm Sam Pollard, and this is my class on documentary editing.
Now, there's the scene we talked about before, and you said you'd be interested in talking about the buffalo wing eating scene. So I'm wondering, mm-hmm. <laughs> I guess, A, because you mentioned there was ad-libbing. So was there ad-libbing in the buffalo wing eating contest scene, even though the main actress wasn't in it? And, yeah. you know, how did you tackle the scene? I would say the ad- ad-libbing of that scene wasn't necessarily in the dialogue, but but Tone Bell did a lot of fun stuff where he was like, taking extra long drinks of milk and and just like that there was like one take where it was maybe like 10 seconds of him just like on a straw and it was just like very funny and the dynamic between him and and the and cooper's dad in that scene was just like very funny between like they're basically battling out over who could eat a hot wing and then he just overextends himself and the the pacing of that scene was a lot of fun to mess around with well and so like did, how did the pacing then change over the scene? Like, did you experiment with it or anything? Yeah, I remember at one point I did like a really long showdown of like maybe like five or six back and forths of just like close ups of just like chewing on a wing and pulling it out. And then there was like a stare down. And then we, we ended up pairing it down to just like two or three of the of the funniest beats to really just sell that home. And then there was a lot of like reactions from cooper and his mom to like looking at these two just like showing each other up kind of thing interesting and i feel like there was uh it almost and maybe you can give me insight into this it feels like there was less uh reaction shots than i would normally have expected and it was more of like the fight between them or the standoff between yeah. them was that was that intentional uh, yeah, it was. We tried to find the best reacting thoughts of of Cooper, um, but we wanted to stay focused on on uh, on a Khalil, yeah, and uh, and Cooper's dad. Just to like the tension between them right here was very funny, and just like the back and forth because he's like he gets called out for being an artist in the beginning, yeah. and then like so it, it, he was trying to like uh, defend himself through this buffalo wing eating competition kind of thing. Yeah, and did. Um... So in terms of uh, like this scene, were what were some of the difficulties that you encountered while cutting it? Um, good question. Some of the difficulties were were just like well, continuity was always one of like who was holding a wing where. Um, uh, there was there was some some like uh, they would laugh after like do, do, doing a take, um, yeah. just because they were all having a good time. Uh, and then we did have a little, like, um, we, there, I, I remember there was like a line that was cut. So we had to get the waitress in quicker. So that was like a little bit of a, of a challenge because it was only shot in the close up but, and the wide shot, but then we cut that line. So we had to find a different way to navigate her in and out to drop the, the wings off to the table. Which was, I love that line where she's like, oh, what a happy family. And then they're like, right. <laughs> she's like, I don't want the fight. Yeah. What, um, when- did she ad lib or was that strict based on script or that was that was strict based based off the script? I think she did might have did one ad lib line, but we just we loved her performance on that one. And that was the thing too. We wanted to go to the close up there at one point, but we yeah. just loved how it was in the wide. So we're like, let's just live in the wide here. Interesting. What um like in terms of the performances, how much um how much variety did you have from from the characters? Um, there was a decent amount of variety. I, I remember they were asked to do it like very, very straight face serious and more just like, yeah. um, with the, like a toned down, like a uh, tension, uh, just like subtly. And I think yeah. we lived in that one more. And that one was a lot of fun too. With uh, we were limited in some takes too because of the sweat factor. So we the, our makeup department kept adding s- sweat to <laughs> Leo's face. Yeah. So there was like certain takes that progressed along the way that like oh, this is a funny reaction of him eating a wing, but we can't use it earlier because he has too much sweat on his face. Yeah. Now, what is your hot sauce ability? Like, are you someone who can, like, go really hot? Or are you, like myself, I handle it? I like to think I can go really hot, but whenever I do, I regret it. So I'm more of a, a mild wing person um, just to enjoy it. And I, it was recently, we, we actually ordered wings recently, and we thought we ordered mild but it ended up being the hot and Ooh. we were just like no <laughs> that's right you're you're not a, a hot sauce person oh no i can't handle it it's, yeah <laughs> uh, 
I have a friend who can and loves it. And it's like, nah, I can't do it. Yeah, it's like I, I wouldn't survive. I think there's like that hot wing challenge, like showdown or whatever. And I would not survive on that. <laughs> if you need a medic, it's kind of right. dangerous <laughs> at that point. <laughs> There's like a medic standing by for that. I think there was like right. a documentary on it. Um, now, you also brought up the scene, the prom scene at the end in episode eight, which is sort of the accumulation of everything coming together, you know, mm-hmm. with her. So what were some of the challenges of that scene? Um, That scene was just uh, navigating everyone's storyline and arc throughout the season. We have mm-hmm. uh, Khalil breaking up in the middle of the prom. We have Mavis like finding her her true moment of like what she's been working on this whole season and, and her journey. Then you have the story of like all of the people, like the, the character of CC Bloom and Peppermint and all of their story coming together. And it was just, cause it's, it's not, it's not a long scene. I was, I think our first, my first cut of it was like maybe three or two to three minutes longer. Cause I mm-hmm. thought it was supposed to just be this like huge thing where it's just like everything came to this. But we found that the flow of the scene was just to let everything happen a little faster and more organic. And uh, there was a whole additional, I think it ended up being like a two song dance moment that went from like a fast pace to a slow pace. I think on one of the earlier cuts, we had like three or four different songs just to like show that this was like a yeah. huge long night. Interesting. Um, well, so it, just like navigating the pacing of that was, was yeah. interesting. Now, when I've talked to editors who've done pilots, there's a lot of talk about how like this is it's really difficult because you're setting the pace or you're setting the the tone, I guess, for the whole series and you have to rework things a lot to figure it all out. But I'm wondering, because you did the finale, like, is there um, like are is it a similar sort of level of challenge because you're bringing the whole first season to close and you got to make sure everything works? Or is there like different like um like I guess, how does it compare to uh, to the pilot? Yeah, I, th- I think that's a great question. I would say that there definitely is that level of like we need the whole story to come together, and you have to end it on a way where an audience wants to watch the next season. Mm-hmm. Um, and this was actually fun for me because as an editor, this was my first uh, season finale. I've assisted on projects before, but as an editor, this was my first time experiencing like cutting it. So it was a challenge that I was very happy to be a part of. Um, and then even just getting that story across, I don't know if you, if you remember, but in the, um, not the Best Buy, but in the, when Mavis goes to get her cell phone repaired. Yeah. And she, yeah. she breaks up with, with the jock. That whole like flashback montage moment was added by Danielle um, and Michelle, the showrunners. Wait, that wasn't in the script. They added that afterwards because they wanted that, that came up in the editorial room where they were like, can we try this? Because we need the whole story of the season to build up to Michelle having this like, or maybe uh, sorry, having this moment of like realization. So it's like little stuff like that, that it is added after the fact, but also with that in mind of like, you need the whole story to come together. Cause you're not just making episode eight, you're making, it's basically one through seven got you here and you need to just like take that story home. Interesting. Um, now, I have one last question for you. What would you say is your favorite guilty pleasure film or TV show to watch? Ah, uh, that's a good question. My favorite guilty pleasure show or or uh, TV film or or show. Um, I've recently been just uh, really enjoying. Uh, maybe it's because football season's coming back, but I, I've been enjoying like Ballers. Which oh is yeah, like an HBO show. Um, now, which what? Who's your team in the NFL? Uh, the, the Jets. Okay. Okay, well, I think because uh, Jason, our producer, is a uh, Bills fan, so <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, we'll we'll be uh, playing them Monday night. Yeah. Um. So, and I, I don't even know if I would consider that a guilty pleasure because I I am enjoying it, but it's not a show that I. It's something that I didn't think I would watch, but the football aspect of it kind of just dragged me in, and I just aimlessly, mindlessly watch it sometimes. Yeah. Wow. So, thank you so much for letting me interview today. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. That's it for this week, everyone. Make sure to check us out at filmmakeru.com or, of course, on Instagram at filmmaker underscore you. I'm Gordon Burkell. Thanks for watching. This video is made possible by our sponsors, AJA. We'd like to thank AJA for all their support. 
and tell you to go to AJA.com for all your production and post-production needs.